Dr. Randall, the Soul Doctor, author of Soul Doctoring, Heal Yourself, Heal the Planet, shares her 40 years of experience as a cross-cultural practitioner, medical futurist, and expert in 20 different modalities of healing, along with amazing interviews with some of the leading minds in medicine and big thinkers in all walks of life. The stories of our lives are the woven energies of our soul's paths. They feed and ignite the spiritual light that nourishes the universal soul, the one mind, the cosmic consciousness where we all come together. This podcast is going to be a deep dive into the personal stories of people who have made significant contributions to the planet. What formed them? What moved them to become these leaders and innovators that inspire us so? Hi, Mark. Hi. How are you this morning? Good. I guess we're almost afternoon. Mark Zosky is on with me on my show on Soul Stories, and I'm so thrilled because he's also one of the sponsors for our podcast, and he, you know... Is an amazing guy. He was one of the first ones to come up with these designer salts that we're going to talk about during this show. He's he's built this from the ground up, literally. That's where the salt comes from. Mark Zosky is the visionary and CEO of Saltworks, Inc. And it's the first and largest gourmet salt manufacturing company in North America. Saltworks was first imagined decades ago when Mark studied the health benefits of genuine unrefined sea salts. So you were telling me a story about that before we started, because I asked you, what made you study sea salts? Well, my girlfriend at the time was making a salt scrub, and she was using dead sea salt. And uh, she told me the price was seven, seven or eight dollars a pound, and I just could not fathom that that was correct. So I called all over the U.S., and she was right. That's the price. So. Um, being an entrepreneur, I found it in, I went to the Dead Sea, um, the mm-hmm. place called um, Dead Sea Works, and bought an ocean container of it for 35 cents a pound. And then wow. turned around and called all the people that, that were trying to sell it to me for $7 and sold it to them for 2 or $3 a pound. So it kind of started from there. Um, and then learning more and more about salt, it it became apparent that clean ocean, make clean salt, make healthy salt. You know, um, I think uh, most of the salt we get that's made in the U.S. is made in um, California around San Francisco Bay, which, you know, if you think about it, you probably wouldn't want to drink that water. Um, Why would you want to concentrate it into a salt? Right. Kind Kind of gross. Yeah, the oceans are having trouble these days. We're going to unpack that some more later, Mark. Let me uh, tell the, my guests some more about you. So from that idea, he vowed to revolutionize the salt industry by making high-quality sea salts for everyone, and he did, including food manufacturers, specialty realtors, and consumers. Salt Works became a reality in 2001 and launching with just five products. What were those five products, Mark? Uh, we started, well, for one, we were a B2B company. Um, uh, we allowed people to buy wholesale from, from us, but um, I didn't have a way to actually make the bags smaller than the way I bought them, which was a uh, 55-pound bag. So we sort of launched as a B2B just for um, to make it easier. And it was Dead Sea Salt. Um, it was French salt, French gray salt. And it was Brazilian salt. I think there was some different... Uh, uh, grains and types in there, but that was the main. Mm-hmm. That was the main salts we started so, out. With. So was Brazilian from Brazil and French from France. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. So since then, Mark has developed the perfect salt for everyday cooking or baking, and specialty salts for ideal cooking, including meats, desserts, beverages, and more. In addition to food salts, Saltworks offers the highest quality therapeutic bath salts. I love those. And uh, they're entirely authentic and natural. I want him to tell us about those some more later. Saltworks growth has not gone unnoticed. Mark was named the 2014 Entrepreneur of the Year 
for the Pacific Northwest and has been featured in various publications. Isn't that the magazine you brought to my office one day? You held this up and you said, thanks, Doc. I th this is because of you. Yeah, that was, I think, I believe that was Entrepreneur Magazine. Yeah. That was, <laughs> that was very nice of you. Um, I've helped Mark with his health. He's doing fantastic and including his whole family and I think most of his company. So you got everybody healthy now. Well, 20, 20 years of hard charging took its toll on me. So, yeah. Right. I was in pretty bad shape by the time I came to see you. So Yeah. Well, you look shiny now. Um, so he was also featured in the Seattle Times, Seattle Business Magazine. And in 2016, the company celebrated 10 years on the Inc. Magazine's list for the largest, fast, largest list of America's fastest growing private companies. During the tumultuous year of 2020, which we all know was COVID, Saltworks received gold honors at the Specialty Food Association SOFI Awards. Wow. This year, Saltworks, Zosky and his team of over 100 employees celebrate 20 years of leading the salt industry as the world's most trusted gourmet salt company. Congratulations, Mark. That's, that's quite a record. Yeah, it's been it's been a wild ride. It really has. It started off um, as a hobby and became a business, and now it is becoming a big business, actually. Beautiful, beautiful. You were telling me before that, I mean, I'm particularly interested in the bath salts because I'm a physician and a healer, and, you know, I think I'm going to put on my website Dr. Randall's Preferred, and I'm going to put bath salts. It's going to be your company. But then I'm going to also put all your kinds of salt. But you were telling me that there's, you know, a real difference between your salt and your ordinary bath salt you're going to go get. First of all, where it's sourced from. Second of all, how you treat particularly the CBD salts, how you get it to do what it does in the emulsified form. And um, that you, you have two brands of salt, right? Um, actually, we have several brands, but the two. Oh, okay. On the website. Yeah, uh, Ultra Epsom is probably our most famous brand. Um, it's a, a very high-end Epsom salt that we um, sell that you find in like Whole Foods and places like that. But uh -huh. um, our two bath salts, um, Bokek is our original dead sea salt formula. So it's, you know, pure dead sea salt and um, organic es essential oils. So mm. just two ingredients, people seem to like that. You know, there's just- I love those. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we got ready to do a new bath salt based on um, CBD because uh, CBD seemed to be like uh, a very, um, oh, trendy, I guess is the right, trendy, trendy, or at least a, maybe even a, a complete shift in the way people are thinking about how to use CBD. So we decided, to use our, our new um, polar salt, which is a salt we get from Antarctica. Um, water comes from Antarctica. It goes into um, salt ponds in Australia, in Southern Australia. And it's the cleanest ocean water that we've been able to find. I mean, I've searched wow. the world over. And, you know, the difference between ocean salt and sea salt, everybody kind of uses those terms interchangeably, but um, sea salt, comes from a sea, which is a pretty small body of water. Let's think of the Mediterranean, it's about the quarter the size of the US. And there's 20 countries that border the Mediterranean. They, there's no water goes in, no water goes out. So as you can imagine, it is, it's just been collecting everything you can imagine from, you know, plastics to, um, well, I'm not gonna talk about all the stuff that's in there, but you can imagine human waste and everything else, farm runoff, everything you can imagine. Heavy metals. What's yeah? What's I mean? All those things are pretty bad, but there's a new uh, classification of, of toxin or, or carcinogen, which is nanoplastics. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that no one was ever really able to study because they couldn't see it. They are so small; they're fractions of an atom, and they soak through your skin. Um, they soak through. So from the inside out, if you eat it, it'll soak through from the inside out. If you put it on your skin, it'll soak from the outside in um, very toxic anyway. yeah I guess I, I, I can tell you more about that and, and actually I found out about nanoplastics by working on relief rx so uh, relief rx was our 
our CBD salt. We were ready to, uh, we decided we'd make it certified organic. And we got pretty far along. And as we're talking to more and more um, specialists about it or in doctors, they all said, well, it doesn't soak into your skin. Like, well, what do you mean? It's like, it's like wiping peanut butter on your skin. It just doesn't soak in. So I'm like, that's it. We're not going to make it. I'm not going to make, you know, fake salt. That doesn't work. But I went and started uh, doing some research about, you know, how could you make it go into your skin? And so there was a lot of um, technology developed in 2005 to make um, nicotine go through your skin. So nicotine patches, those kind of things where they had nano emulsified the nicotine so that the, the particles were so small, they would soak through your skin. So I thought, well, if, if it can be done with that, it can be done with CBD. So um, we did a lot of research and we had a lot of labs try to make it for us. The problem is, is that they all, they all were making it, uh, they were all trying to work on something that you could drink or eat or whatever. And our, ours was a completely different thing. We wanted just to soak through your skin, that's it. And we want it to be clean and be able to be certified organic. So we set up our own nano emulsification lab and went through a battery of tests and we got our CB down, CBD down to a less than 60 nanometers, which nanometer is an atom. So you can imagine less than 60 is, I mean, it's, it's thinner than air. Um, when we actually do the final filtration process, it's so small that it sterilizes the it sterilizes the water it sterilizes everything i mean we use this special water that we make here but nevertheless it sterilizes it but because of our process and the way we do everything in-house we don't ever have to put um preservatives in it because it we actually uh nano emulsify the cbd and immediately put it right into our process put it onto the salt and Put it back into hibernation so the nano emulsification you kind of think of it as is you're not breaking the particles you're just separating them into millions and millions of particles or billions of particles they want to get back together again so to keep them from doing that we put them on the salt and then we um use a, a vacuum dryer to vacuum it onto the salt uh and that puts it back into um, hibernation when you put it in your tub that it, it starts the process again. And so for six, those particles are so small that they'll soak through your skin. So, and that's, wow. um, fascinating. Okay. Well, it's pretty sad that a lot of people have used CBD without this nano emulsification process because you're, you're really not getting the effects of it. I mean, I think, mm -hmm. I think the reason why you like it so much is because it actually works. You know, um, I, had my mom do a lot of testing. Um, my mom's uh, about 80 years old. And then when first time I had her tested, she called me from her bathtub crying. She says, honey, you're gonna be rich. <laughs> she, she, thought it, she thought it worked so great. She says, I, I feel amazing. Um, so she was tears of joy. Um, but yeah, that's really set us apart from, from anyone else is because we do the whole process ourselves. And because our CBD is certified organic and specifically made for bath salt. Um, it's different than anything else that you can get out there. It's probably the, I would say the most effective topical CBD that there is out there today. Because if you think about a, a tincture or a lotion or a shampoo, whatever it might be, it's hard to get that all over your entire body. But with, um, by putting it in the bath, you know, you can get it everywhere. It'll touch you <laughs> everywhere including like a lot of people use it on their pets. Um, we have an original formula that has no scent to it whatsoever. And I thought that was kind of silly, except we found out that a lot of people use it on their pets because their pets don't want to smell like lavender or whatever the whatever our organic um, mm -hmm. essential oil is. But the unscented, you know, if, you, if your pet's got um, skin problems or whatever it may be, how would you ever get, you know, something all over its whole body you know, well, it's true this, you just put this bath salt in water and whether you want to put the dog in a tub or just pour the water over, you know, over your dog or cat or whatever it may be, um, it's extremely effective. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, I, I you know, we, uh, we decided we were going to do certified organic. Um, I don't know if I, I would ever have done it if I knew what the process was. Right. It took months and it took, well, I mean, 
amount of paperwork and the amount of regulatory to make certified organic bath salts is insane. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be bad. It was 10 times worse than that. But it's funny, <laughs> our, our first bath salt that we were, that we made certified organic just happened to be our CBD salt. You know, you'd think that would be the hardest one to do, but it was the easiest. Oh, that's awesome. Because you had to get certified organic CBD. Yeah, and, from, and it, yeah. Exactly. So from a farm in, in Tennessee, they had just become certified organic. And so we were able to use their their certifying body to certify, you know, we put their their CBD on our bath salt. So it was made it much easier. Yeah. Well, I love it. I think it's fantastic. And, you know, just for my guests, it, do, it isn't like, you know, you're going to get high or great. You just get relief. That's a good name for it. You know, if your muscles are tight from working out or you're toxic or, you know, you have an actual injury, you know, it's fabulous or chronic pain, back pain. A lot of people have. I mean, you know, skin's your largest, largest organ and people forget that, you know, that. That's right. So if you're going to, if you're going to bring relief to your muscles, your joints, your bones, whatever it is, the most effective way is through your skin. Cause it, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, it's the, that, that's, um, that is part of the, the, our effort to find the cleanest salt possible. Cause whether you put it exactly. in your mouth or you put it in the tub, it makes a huge difference. Um, because right. it's, it's just concentrated, but it, whatever the water it came from, the body of water came from, whatever's in that gets concentrated. So if it's super clean, then you're going to have a clean ocean based, uh, sea salt. If it's, not clean if it's maybe the mediterranean um the mediterranean is the most polluted uh sea in all of europe and maybe the most polluted sea in all the world and i don't mean by one or two times it's like 10 20 50 times mm. so um the water truly is uh toxic but then when you take a thousand gallons of water and turn it into one pound of salt you can imagine that's probably the highest concentration of nanoplastics that you could get anywhere is out of the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. Is that where most of the salt comes from for, for yeah, other bath Medi salts? For, for bath salts and food salt, unfortunately, the Mediterranean is the um, number one source. About 85% mm -hmm. of all the salt we have in the United States yeah. comes from the Mediterranean. It's really bad. Yeah. Um, well, the ocean is one of my deep passions, and I can tell you that all the oceans are suffering and there some of the scientists ocean scientists say that they're the most toxic place on earth now so there's no uh, doubt you know, that you're getting it right from a, a, a basically a glacier it sounds like that is the cleanest water that's amazing it is it's one of, it's, it's the last of the clean water um that's mm -hmm. the problem you know we started when we were looking I've looked all the world over for the cleanest salt. And I thought, well, Alaska, I mean, that's easy. That's going to come from Alaska. But actually, the way the ocean gyres work, um, the, the seawater goes in front of, goes past Asia and then comes around through Alaska. So mm. even though you would think, wow, that's where the really clean water was, it was actually some of the dirtiest water that yeah. we had polluted water that we so had to go on. by Asia first. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and so, so fascinating. So, Yes. So you had to learn about ocean currents and everything to do this. I mean, one, one of the things that, that probably made um, salt, salt work successful or me successful in the salt business is that is all we do is salt. So um, I haven't been studying about a whole lot of other things except for salt. So what mm -hmm. goes into making it, you know, what's in it. Um, we have pioneered some tests that can actually tell where the salt comes from because um, Food fraud in the salt business is rampant. Um, most of the salt that you get doesn't come from where it says it come from. It, you know, mm -hmm. so it, it may say it came from Italy. It really came from Tunisia or from Egypt or whatever. Mm. It may be. Um, and so we actually have a way now to test that can tell you with, by what's in the salt where it came from. Wow. So that's what I'm saying. You may say you just deal with salt, but you had to become... You know, a salt detective, you had to learn, study ocean currents, you had to study what's in what bodies of water. I mean, that's that's amazing. That's really cool. That That's yeah. the kind of company I want picking out my bath salts. <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing is that, is that everyone, I think when I first started, it seemed, I thought this isn't going to be very exciting, right? It's sort of a, 
this is a not a, a non exciting business or it's not thrilling or whatever, but it's really become a, a super. I mean, I'm very passionate about salt. I don't know if you can tell, but I am super passionate about salt. But I'm also passionate about um, all our, the way we market it. You know, we always market the real thing. I mean, we make sure that mm -hmm. our stuff is authentic. Um, we develop technology that that doesn't that cleans the salt to the best of their ability. I mean, we can only clean it from the outside, right? I mean, once it's been made into salt, the inside was the um, one thing we couldn't get to. Um, we made up up a partnership with um, a company called Cheatham in Australia. And now we have control from the water where, you know, when they draw the water in, what time of year they draw it in, and then how the salt is made all the way through the whole process, right into a customer's bathtub or in, in, into a customer's mouth, which I don't think there's any other salt company in the world that has that kind of supply chain control. Um, wow. So it makes our salt not only the cleanest, but the safest and mm -hmm. um, the least amount of of um, probably the most eco-friendly salt in the world, um, just because the, the least amount of shipping, the least amount of people touching it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And salt is, as long as the oceans are clean, which, you know, like you said, there's getting to be less and less of those, but as long as the oceans are clean, it you can take all the salt out of it. I mean, taking salt out of the ocean, it, you could we could take it out for the next thousand years and we're never gonna affect the salt level in the ocean. Mm -hmm. It's what we're putting into it. There's a, there's a guy I wish I remembered his name, but that that ha, that uh, had a quote that was, "We've been feeding plastic into the sea, and now the sea is feeding it back to us." And it's pretty true, you know. We put all this plastic in, and the the oceans are are now feeding it back to us. I mean, you know, they're breaking it, they, they break it down with UV and and ocean currents. I mean, the sand and beaches and waves and that kind of stuff. And now we're we're eating the very plastic that we fed to the ocean. Mm -hmm. Does that end up in the drinking water too? Unfortunately, there's plastic in everything. Um, That's so, what I think. Yeah. So, so in studying um, studying up on on nano emulsification and figuring out what where where there is nanoplastics, it's everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. But there's varying degrees of it, right? So, I, I think there's a couple parts per billion in 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 some things, and then there is several parts per you know million kind of thing i mean the difference is there's a it's a broad range right of mm -hmm. there's no filters that can take it out because it's so small that a filter that could take out a nanoparticle down to the size of an atom you couldn't even get water to pass through it wow right? so the the problem with the like the mediterranean is they're never going to fix that that's not something that one in our lifetime they're ever going to say oh well, we fixed the mediterranean it's now clean those nanoplastics there's no way currently there's no technology on earth that will take it out so wow. pretty sad and then and then of course it's in their fish it's in everything mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. um, if you lived on the shores of the mediterranean i would order in pizza <laughs> that was made with water that had nanoplastics in yeah, it. yeah probably yes yeah wow that's so interesting so what's your what's your best selling salt right now designer salt i mean i know i think your best selling salt is regular salt right so so we don't sell regular salt because uh, there's different classifications well, i know not regular but know, you know but what i mean there are different classifications of salt there is refined salt which is the chemical right that's what we were grown grew up with morton you know refined salt that's the chemical of salt and then there is sea salt which is just generally it could be kind of anything it could be kind of polluted it could be dirty who knows what it is and then there is ocean salts and then different um, variations or different quality standards for ocean salt we sell the highest quality ocean salt but that happens to be the one we sell the most of um, we sell it under two brands pure ocean and polar and um, it we sell to we sell to probably ten thousand different food manufacturers i think it's more than that um, when covid hit uh, we got a call from just about everyone um, in the government saying that we had to continue operations because um, our salt being shipped to food companies was considered uh, critical to our infrastructure or critical to, you know, keeping the country going was salt works to continue shipping salt. 
Our two best selling salts are Pure Ocean and Polar Salt. They both come from the same place. They both come from Australia. But the reason why they're the best seller is because of, they're in every product you can imagine. So um, we sell to 10 or 15,000 different food companies that then put our salt either you know onto pretzels, onto crackers, in um, onto potato chips. I think probably everyone in the United States at one point or another has had pure ocean salt, you know, on in their mouth. Um, it's it's. So uh, is this the salt that comes from the pol- um, the? Did you say Antarctica and then yeah. goes to Australia and then? Yep. It, right. It, okay. It, that's the cool. same salt. Um, the the classification between the two is the the pure ocean comes from anywhere in Australia and polar comes from one pond one of the uh, furthest south it's one special pond in Australia that um, is so remote and it's so they've been making salt there for 140 years it was like finding um, it was it was it was the place I was looking for my whole life like the perfect salt the, the water was perfect the way they made it was perfect and then they put it into their factory and made it not perfect. And so that's where Saltworks came in and we helped them with technology, um, how to finish the salt, you know, because they did such a great job of starting the process or doing, actually they did most of the heavy lifting, but they made the salt um, and then it was their factory that was kind of ruining it. So being able to bring in natural processes that keep the salt, you know, as pure and natural as it was that they had made. So it went from being you know, really used for road salt and refineries to becoming the best sea salt in the world. Took wow. Three years to make that happen. But it's one of my, uh, one of the things that I, I think of my accomplishments is getting um, our polar sea salt to market was the, one of the biggest. And it's also one of the most difficult ones. So we, we buy this on your website or can you find it in the store or? You can find it in the store. You can find it on our website. Um, our, our two websites, one is seasalt.com and the mm-hmm. other one is basalt.com. So they're pretty easy to remember. Um, and then they, 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 um, seasalt.com has been around for 20 years. And then basalt.com, um, we, we spun up just about two years ago. And that's where we put our bass, that's our basalt platform. Is, mm-hmm. bath, is resides on bathsalt.com. So you'd see that as Saltology is the the company or the overarching brand that um, produces or that that markets our bath salt. And then so that division, Saltology Saltology division is our bath salt division, and then Saltworks is our food salt division. So it gets a little confusing so, sometimes, but so if we go on Saltworks. Dot com. We won't find all of these. We have to go separately. Well, you, well, you don't want to go to saltworks.com. That's a whole nother story. Don't ever uh, <laughs> don't ever get a, anything other than .com. If someone tries to talk to you into using a different like .us, don't do it. <laughs> it's, okay. It's, anyway, it's seasalt.com. You've, on seasalt.com, you can find everything. On, okay. On um, basalt.com, it's just more just about the basalt, so you're able to get have a more of an immersive, dis- there's more information on basalt.com about basalt, right? Mm-hmm. So um, seasalt.com has always been the one-stop shop for every bit of content you can imagine for salt in general, sea salt, ocean salt, that kind of thing. Um, basalt.com is sort of the, the divert that we diverted a lot of that content and are going to build up the same amount of content about basalt. So history of basalt and what makes a good basalt, how to use it. A lot of people mm-hmm. don't really know how to use basalt. You know, they just pour it in and go, but there is a, there is a, a way to use it that is depending on what you want to do. But for, for instance, if you want to detox, then you would start with a hot bath um, with dead sea salt in it, with our relief our in it. And then you would stay in the bath until it became Tempid, I believe is the word, but until the water cools down. So you start out by detoxifying, right? So start in this hot water, you're releasing toxins, you're opening your pores, everything's literally coming out. And then as the water cools, you're bringing it back in. The proper way to use basalt, in my opinion, the proper way to use it is to start with hot water. 
you know, like as hot of water as you can um, tolerate or your skin can tolerate. And what happens is it opens up your pores and you detox, right? That's where it's going to draw out um, toxins in your skin, in your body. And then if you stay in the tub until it cools down or becomes tepid, then the reverse happens. It takes the, the minerals that are in the salt um, and actually absorbs them, the CBD in the case of a CBD salt and absorbs it into your skin. So if you just jump into a hot tub and jump right out, you're not really getting the whole benefit of it. You know, you're sort of I getting the detox, the detox, but you're not getting then the, you know, um, you're not absorbing in the, the, minerals. the minerals and the CBD, whatever it is that is the mm -hmm. essential oils. You know, they're not, you're not getting as much of that um, benefit as, they, as you could. Mm -hmm. What, okay, so how, the other thing I always wonder about is how much should I put in? Well, I mean, you know, that, that's the funny thing. If you look at our products, the, the portion size is always five or ten times bigger than anyone else's. And it's because you need a lot. You know, I mean, if you think about it, if you put two tablespoons of salt in your bath, it's just that's nothing. There's nothing there. I mean, if you just to recreate the ocean, you need to put in about two pounds in a bathtub. Now, that's so how like many it. cups is that? Uh, it's about two cups. It's about two cups. Yeah. I always um, put in at least two cups. And then maybe I mean, sometimes I'll put in two flavors, depending on. Yeah, I mean, I, I think depending, I think you're, it's a better bath if you use twice as much and bathe in it half as often than if you just, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Don't put enough in, then it's not really, you're not really getting all the benefit of. Yeah. Well, that's what I found personally, and that was just by experimentation. But yeah, I put it, well, probably at least two cups, maybe more, but probably two types. Our our CBD salt is the has is the most potent CBD salt that's out there. I mean, for two reasons: one, we put lots of CBD in it, but also because it's been nano emulsified, you're actually getting the benefits from it. So mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a one-two punch. It's you're getting more CBD, and it's actually more, you know available bioavailable mm -hmm. to your skin or to your system so um and i love coupling it with the essential oils too because they're therapeutic very i mean what that's the thing is i think for a long time we had the salt we let the salt st steal the show and so it was you know dead sea salt with whatever scent right and mm -hmm. it comes to bath salt it's the it's the salt is it's very very important right it's an important part of it but so are whatever your other ingredients so having really good organic essential oils makes a big difference versus a fragrance oil. A fragrance oil does nothing. It kind of might smell good, but it does nothing beneficial for you. But using organic French lavender has tons of therapeutic benefits. I mean, just even in aromatherapy alone, you know, there, mm -hmm. uh, there's a benefit of the aromatherapy part of it, but also onto your skin. Um, so yes, um, we, we, we try to just use two ingredients. Sometimes we do more than two. Um, but uh, for for instance, um, our our dead Bokeh dead sea salt, it's typically dead sea salt and essential uh, organic essential oil, and that's it. Um, mm -hmm. it. It's it. And if you ever turn over labels, you know, and compare ours to someone else's, most bath salts have 10, 12 different ingredients. I'm not really sure why. I don't know what they're doing there with all those extra ingredients. But um, I don't know. But I I personally can't stand fragrances that aren't authentic. So I love your salt so much is because they're all authentic and even the, the essential oils, which I love the smell of. But when you like if somebody comes to me with a bottle of cologne, mm, no, makes me sick. Yeah, no, that, I, it was funny. One of the, the first complaints we got with our um, with our um, oh with our eucalyptus bath salt. Um, so I said, bring me complaints. I want to if somebody complain about this. I want to know. So it took a long time. I'm like, hey, why is no one complaining about this stuff? I'm like, hey, we haven't had any complaints come in. Finally, customer service came to me and said, hey, we got our first complaint. It's like, okay, great. What was it? Said, well, the person said that it was too strong and they could smell it clear out in the hallway. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> use less. <laughs> Just use less. I said, put that, put that review up. That's a good one. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're treating people out in the hallway too, so that's a good thing. Well, I mean, I think they were saying they were saying that it just it was more potent than any that they've ever smelled before, and that's because we really, I mean, we're building the best bath salt possible, not yeah. just it was real. <laughs> yeah. 
So what do you have Himalayan salt too? What we is do. Himalayan salt? Himalayan salt, um, it all comes from the same place. People try to. It's all it, trendy, you know. It, yeah, it's it comes from Pakistan. Um, people don't like to hear that, but it's the truth. It comes from Pakistan, um, and it does really come from the Himalayan mountains, but so far down the Himalayan mountains that it would it's you know it doesn't come from K two or any of the Himalayan mountains you've ever heard from, right? There, it's, it's like the Cascade Range. It's the smallest part of it, but nevertheless. Um, it's kind of a miracle because when when salt is created, you know, in in uh, in the earth from a, an ocean that's dried up, an old ocean or whatever, getting the balance just right, just the right amount of sodium chloride without anything else in there is, you know, it's, it's a one in a million shot. I mean, if you think of uh, Salt Lake City and uh, the, if you've ever been in the salt, Great Salt Lakes or whatever, it's mostly chemical. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's very little salt and mostly chemical. Um, so to have that perfect balance of sodium chloride with trace uh, minerals without then having you know too much sulfur and too much uh, magnesium or whatever is it's just one of the that's why there's so few mines that that you can get really good edible salt out of or good bathing salt out of because circumstances have to be just perfect for them mm -hmm. to taste good and for them to be good for your skin. But why do people love Himalayan salt and say it's more healthy? And why is it pink? Well, so the the, the pink part of it is um, what what makes it so trendy and what why people I mean like the look of it, um, and that comes from um, minerals that it's exposed to, you know, in the ground. Like iron, iron. Or? yeah, yes, like like just a little a little bit of iron, not super high in iron, but um, that is where the color comes from. If you think about it, the salt was made. You know, I hate to give an uh, exact date because every time I say, oh, it was 200 million years ago, people freak out. Or if it's 50 million years ago or, you know, 2000 years ago, um, people have who knows how old it really is. But for but everyone, I think, agrees that that Himalayan salt was made before there was humans on Earth or at least, you know, humans making chemicals. So because it's buried in the Earth, they're pulling this salt out it doesn't have any of the trappings of our current oceans, um, you know, or anything else. I mean, it's been locked up in a mountain for millions of years. So mm -hmm. in that, in that respect, you know, it's clean. The problem is that it also has rocks and clay and other stuff in it. So um, that's part of the technology we developed was uh, our, our technology takes Himalayan salt and then removes the clay and the rocks and the stuff that you don't want to necessarily be eating. Um, and so we can clean that from the outside. It's um, I, I don't know. I thought it was, I thought it was a trendy thing. I thought it was be around for a couple of years. That was about 12 years ago and it just gets bigger and bigger every year. I mean um, it, it's a great salt. It really is. Um, it's good. Um, it's got a lot of advantages of, I mean, salt is the only mineral you eat, you know? And so to think about people always like, how long is this going to last? What's the expiration date? Well, I mean, if, if it's already a million years old, you know, what's another yeah. five or 10 years, you know? I mean, so, um, you know, salt doesn't ever expire. I mean, it's, right. it's one of those things that if you, if you don't let it get wet, it, you can pass it, pass it down generation to generation. Mm-hmm. I got a quick funny thing to tell you. I don't know if you think it's funny, but um, the Dark Ages, back in the Dark Ages, this is how important salt is for human life. They, back in the Dark Ages, they claim that the reason for the Dark Ages was because of lack of salt. So hmm. because it was when governments had the most control of salt, and so they used it, they taxed it to the point that most people couldn't get enough salt in their diet, and they lived off their own land or whatever. and it literally made them, their brains not be able to function. So, wow. uh, I mean, so, so if you think about what a human needs to be alive, you know, to live, and it starts off with air, that happens pretty quickly. And then water, that happens over, you know, a week or, and then the next thing you would think would be food, but it's actually salt. If you take the salt out, that, that I mean, you can go without food for a long, long time, but you cannot go without salt. 
I mean, that is mm -hmm. the, that's the, what runs the entire, your entire engine, your body, your brain, everything else. If, if you think about it, no matter what kind of injury you have, you fall out of your car or someone shoots you, the very first thing they do is they roll up with an ambulance and they put an IV in you and there's sodium chloride in that IV. I mean, they don't, right. they don't, they don't, it doesn't matter whether you had a heart attack, it doesn't matter what happened to you. The first thing they do is put sodium chloride in you because that's the, that's the, the, um, that's what our bodies run on. I mean, that's what our tears, our blood, you know, our sweat, everything comes from salt. Um, so it, there's people that say things like salt's bad for you. Too much salt, too much of everything's bad for you, but you have to have a certain amount of salt. I mean, it's one of the few foods, you know, if you try to compare it to like sugar and you don't have to have sugar. I mean, it's not like the, the government doesn't say you should eat this much sugar a day, but they literally say you should eat this much salt a day, you know? So it's not that salt is bad, it's the quantity, you know? And I think a lot of the previous testing that they did with salt was, you know, people are eating three bags of potato chips a day. Well, was it the salt that was making them unhealthy or was it the, yeah. potato, the potato chips? Um, the, the reason why people have talked about the direct link between reduction in salt and lowering your blood pressure and, you know, it's all junk science. It really is. It's terrible. Um, what happens is if you take someone and you reduce the amount of salt below the level their body needs to function, their whole body slows down. Mm -hmm. So it literally goes into like, you know, hey, I don't have enough salt. I'm going to slow down my heartbeat. I'm going to slow everything. So, yeah, it gives you a lower blood pressure, but it doesn't make you healthier. It's not, it's not, you know what I mean? It's, it's a, it's a uh, lower blood pressure is a symptom of a problem. And the problem is not enough salt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, it happens in old folks home uh, or in, in uh, retirement homes all the time. They take away their salt. And the mm -hmm. reason why they do that is because it makes them less active. They don't eat as much. They don't drink as much. They don't need as much attention. It's a. You think, I, I think they know a, that that they're doing that on purpose? There's a class action lawsuit. There's a class action lawsuit against the huh. biggest, um, the biggest uh, whatever they are, retirement homes, and the, these aren't these aren't the ones you pay to get into. These are the ones that you just go into because you don't have anywhere else to go. But I, my my grandpa uh, would get would do worse and worse and worse, and then they would put him in the hospital, put him on an IV, and he would be lucid and it was like wow he's back everything's great they'd put him yeah. back in his nursing home and he'd go downhill again so wow. he asked me for a jar of salt and he would stick his finger in there every day and put it on his tongue wow there, it made a difference it really that's did. so interesting that from a very early age you you noticed these things when i was a professor at ucla and i had a dual appointment at ucla in the va now at the veterans hospital we had a lot of people with liver failure and they had ascites, meaning they flew up in their abdominal space with fluid. And you can't take it out. It'll just come right back and that'll drain their intervascular space of fluid. So it's a tough problem, but they take away their salt. And I've noticed over and over again that these people just kind of fade away. And I say, we got to do this slowly because they need a certain amount of salt. And they all thought I was nuts. But, you know, that's not the first time. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of the things I've been called nuts for, it's all happening now. So, anyway. The biggest, I would the, just, biggest, um, the biggest and best research project that they've done on salt, they did in Europe. And it was over 10 years. And I believe it was 10,000 people of all ages. And, and they really studied this because they were going to prove for sure that salt caused high blood pressure it really blew up in their face. I mean, they literally had to admit that people with the low salt diet died the youngest. The people with the 2,500 milligram, what they recommend or whatever was the, you know, the next, but the people with the high site, uh, um, higher sodium diet or high, higher salt actually lived to be older. Now, hmm. I mean, they're not saying go out and eat more salt, but there's, but they were trying to prove that if we can get people to trim their salt by 25%, they're going to live longer. And mm -hmm. the actual, the opposite became true. You yeah, I think I like, agree with you. I think it's actually the junk food that carries the salt that should yes. be blamed and not the salt. You know, it's it's the um, saturated fat that comes in the unhealthy meat that has hormones and 
toxins and glyphosates and all that stuff. And also it's miserable. It's miserable animals. I call it eating our own misery. That has been shown to cause diabetes and disease across the board, heart disease, everything. So it's not the, it's not the, it's what the salt comes on that kills you, not the salt. <laughs> well, and, and it's also the, what the, how the salt is made or, I mean, you think about well, that too. Is it toxic? Salt, it's the crack of salt, right? I mean, it's just, they've taken everything out and they've just made it a chemical. You know, I like that. The crack of salt. So it's, what ultimately do you see? I mean, do you see being able to like, I love this, what you did with this uh, Australian company and showed them how to make salt. Do you see more of that happening that you yeah, be able I mean, to convert the salt industry so that we don't have the crummy stuff anymore? Well, I don't think there's going to be enough ocean salt for everyone, unfortunately. Um, clean ocean salt, I should say. But um, we are developing as many fields as we can, some salt ponds, fields. I think fields is sort of uh, an area where they, they, they harvest salt. It's a field and they have individual ponds, you know, as it goes to the pond. We are developing as many as we can in Australia because it's the furthest south you can get. There's some other locations in like Chile, um, in Argentina that just don't have the infrastructure to get the salt out of the country yet. But mm -hmm. everything, in my opinion, everything besides that, it just starts degra degrading as you go down, you know, as, a, as you get to the smaller the ocean or the, and then, and then all the way down to a sea is the worst. You know, once you've get, once you've put something in a small body of water and then have left it in there for 40 years, you can imagine the concentrations of everything, of chemicals mm -hmm. and fertilizer and everything is insane. Yeah. As I think I think there's going to be an aha moment with the uh, Mediterranean. There should have been by now already. But, I mean, it is the talcum powder or the asbestos of our time. I mean, it's at some point, people are going to wake up and go, I don't want that in my body. I don't want that in my food. Um, mm -hmm. We... Uh, helped start um, the Safe Salt Association, which is a nonprofit that Wonderful. Their, their their whole mission is to make sure that A, you know where your salt came from and that you can trust whatever's in food whenever, because it's one of those things where salt kind of gets snuck in. And if you, you imagine you've got organic food, people care about every, the person who makes it care about every single ingredient, but then they put Mediterranean salt in there. They don't realize, you know what I mean? They don't realize they're putting the worst substance possible in there. So when that happens, when people understand that and figure it out, we have a, um, a, a website we put together that explains the problem with the Mediterranean and specifically. It's one of the, it's a huge crisis for, for Europe. You can imagine it's their, a big part of their food source, you know, the fish and stuff that come out of the Mediterranean. It's their tourism. You know, I wouldn't necessarily swim for very long in the Mediterranean. I think I would swim once or twice, but I wouldn't go there every day and swim in the water just because there's all these nanoplastics that are floating around in, in the water that'll soak right into yeah. your skin. It's, it's, it's think, a lot of all the oceans too, I, Mark, but that that's so fabulous. You started the Safe Salt Association, you said? Yes. Yes. And, and then you said the, there's a website? There is. Um, You know what? I wish I had that at the top of my uh, on uh, top of my head right here, I believe it is. There's actually, well, there's two, there's a safe salt website, which is safe mm -hmm. salt, I believe. And, and people is, can find what good salt. If yes. And, and so the, the purpose of uh, the safe salt association is to certify the salt makers, you know, the people, mm -hmm. the, the industries, the companies that make the salt. So that it's pretty easy to tell where your salt came from and what's in it. So you can make an educated choice whether you want to, you know, continue to use that or not. But then when that same logo is put on um, packaging for food, it's the organic certification or we're, we're trying to make it the organic certification for salt because salt cannot be organic. You know, so it's one of the few things that we eat that you cannot certify organic. So the Safe Salt Association is, is, is a logo. When you see it, you know for a fact that that the salt isn't from the Mediterranean for one, um, but that that it's authentic and that it is something you can trust 
in your food, you know, as being safe. That's awesome, Mark, because almost everything has salt in it. Thank you for your work. Oh, it, it's been a it's been a pleasure. I mean, it's it's a it's a wild ride. People ask me, you know, to kind of tell me what tell them what the worst part of everything is, and it's, and it's I've been blessed. I mean, who would ever think that you could get into the oldest business in earth, on earth? You know, I mean, <laughs> salt business. The salt trade has been it's one of the oldest businesses ever. That right. That I could jump into that twenty years ago and actually have a you know make a significant change in the way people eat the way they see salt uh, then the way they see salt um <laughs> the way they you know the the way they look at salt and how they consume it and and look at it i mean refined salt was the salt that everybody used when i started saltworks 20 years ago i mean that's fantastic well i appreciate the work you've done and i now i know well, I mean, of course, I've known you for, I don't know, 10 years or something. So yeah. I've been using better salt since then. But So thank you for everything. This was so much fun. And uh, did you, did you want to have anything to add? or? Um, no, thank you for having me. I mean, I, that's to try to get a, um, the message out there, you know, of, of the, we are destroying our oceans. I know that's really important to you, but you know, if we, if we're, we're, we need those oceans for salt. I mean, we need, we need the, the clean oceans for salt. And, and we've got one of clean ocean left, um, you know, the great Southern ocean or um, Arctic ocean, Antarctic ocean. Um, if we don't keep, if we keep polluting it, there's, we're not going to have a choice, but to have eat polluted salt. You know what I mean? We're going to, cause even the refining process doesn't take this out. I mean, you, even mm -hmm. when you refine salt, you still get that yummy, um, nanoplastic in there oh uh, last thing i should say that this is um people threw out microplastic i think a lot of people heard about microplastics um four years ago five years ago and that was a, a red herring right microplastic can be up to four millimeters which is huge you would know if you ate that and even if you did it just passed through you and i think they did that because there's microplastics in everything you know in the the packaging we use everything else but nanoplastics are a whole different animal. They're completely different. And so most people confuse the two things or conflate the two words, but they're very different. So when you look up nanoplastics, there's very few, you know, they're all very recent, but there's very few research papers on it, maybe a hundred, but they all say that it is the most toxic substance you could put in your body because there's no way is. to process it. Mm. Yeah. And also the other toxins in the, in the ocean or the sea, glom on to the nanoplastics make it even more toxic absolutely absolutely and, and mean, more able to enter your body so cleanest oceans make the cleanest salt there's just no doubt about that okay mark thank you so much thanks and for thank you for for sponsoring our show here <laughs> oh, it's a great cause um i think that yeah and at, everybody we have on has a cause and you know yours is clear so thank you so much and we're going to get the, this out there so people can start choosing for themselves better. Perfect. That sounds okay. great. All right. Take care. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. I'm Dr. Gail Randall, creator and host of Soul Stories. I just want to thank you for listening to my podcast. I recently got a notification from the international podcast people. And I was astounded that so many countries are listening to my podcast in the category of alternative health. So thank you, and please continue to listen. I especially want to thank Egypt, Croatia, Japan, and Switzerland, also France and Ireland, because my numbers were quite high there. So keep up the good work, and check out my Instagram at Dr. Gail Randall, and particularly check out my Instagram TV where you can hear me talking about alternative medicine subjects and also see me. It's a very good show, and I think you'll like the subjects. It's on 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Friday, but it's recorded there, so you can find it there anytime you look. Okay, thanks again. I love you guys. 
This is Dr. Gail Randall from Soul Stories and author of Soul Doctoring, Heal Yourself, Heal the Planet. I want to thank Saltology, our sponsor at bathsalt.com, which fits perfectly into my medicine bag as, as it, like me, calls upon the ancient wisdom and modern technology to heal, especially with the stresses and ills of our modern times. The Bokak brand uses organic salts combined with organic essential oils sourced from ancient Egypt to provide a perfect remedy for your bathing ritual and healing from modern stresses. The Relief RX brand is a unique one-of-a-kind healing salt that uses organic CBD treated with a unique emulsification process to create nanoparticles which easily enter the skin to most effectively heal and relieve aching muscles and joints. Whether from chronic inflammation or just a rough workout, this is the perfect healing bath, especially when you add the organic essential oils of neroli, lavender, eucalyptus, or grapefruit. Your body, mind, and soul will be lifted and soothed like never before. Go now to bathsalt.com. I also want to give special thanks to Larry Antonino and Agora Borealis Recording Studio for music and score and also to CloseToTheEarth.com for IT and computer assistance. Also supported by Randall Wellness Network, bringing health and wellness to you directly. Medical futurist Dr. Gail Madeleine Randall brings 40-plus years as one of America's most forward-thinking doctors, healers, and emerging authors onto a diverse media platform to empower our paths to health, wellness, increased consciousness, and vitality. Gail Madeleine Randall, MD, has long practiced, taught, and encouraged patients to take control of their healing processes and journeys. Randall Wellness Network provides a 360-degree platform for people to heal themselves, and she most emphasizes regenerative approaches for healing individuals, communities, and the planet as one. For more information, go to drgmrandall.com and Instagram at drgailrandall.com and check out the robust Instagram series on Instagram TV, also Facebook, Randall Wellness, and also Dr. Gail Randall.